So today we're going to be taking a look at week one of our build progress. This will be the first video of a series, basically doing a general time lapse of our progress over the next few weeks of the build. I'll just be doing a bit of narration as we take a look at some video and pictures. And keep in mind, we'll be doing more detailed videos, for example, of the solar install, electrical, heater, and those sorts of things. This will just be kind of an introductory um, series to our progress and build. Hope you enjoy it. So as we began planning our layout, layout and build for this new overland truck, we fortunately have had several years living full-time in our current van, and so we had a pretty good idea of things that were working well for us and things we wanted to change. It's different for everyone, but we began the process by basically just taping out lines in our garage and started to play with different configurations. We eventually moved that into the Google SketchUp that you can see here where we came up with more of a, I guess, solid plan. We, we made some slight changes to it, but for the most part, what you see here is uh, what we have built. I've got a separate video that will walk you through the Google SketchUp uh, plan where you can see some more details of the layout. I'll put a link to that above. Here we are just uh, basically unboxing these Kusa composite panels. I'll be talking about these a bit more, but they are a fiberglass reinforced foam board. We have a uh, half inch thickness, and they're they're common in the marine industry as a plywood replacement. And this is our first time working with them, but so far we've been pretty happy with it. Here I am doing some uh, Craig pocket holes. This was just an easy way to help join some panels together while the glue sets. When working with Kusa Composites, it's important to understand that one of the big drawbacks of these types of boards is they don't have good screw retention. They need to be glued. You can use screws to help join things together to let the glue set, but the, the, the uh, screws that we're putting in are... are just for the purpose of holding two surfaces together while the glue sets. The screws are not going to offer any strength. As far as cutting these boards, you can use any standard tools. They cut easily on table saws, drills, everything. They're, they're really nice to work with. You know, the big benefit of them is that they are waterproof, right? There's, there's no natural product or wood in them so um, if they do get wet you won't damage anything they take paint and primer well you know for example you could build a shower out of these panels and just simply throw some primer and a coat of paint and you're ready to go um, the disadvantage of course is they're a bit more costly they're about twice as much as plywood we actually bought these when plywood prices were through the roof, so they were actually kind of comparable, but you know, expect to pay about 200 bucks a sheet for these um, Kusa boards. What we're doing here is we're actually building the kitchenette kind of cabinet, and I we don't even have the, <laughs> the, the new truck yet. We, I just kind of wanted to spend some time using these panels to see how they work and you can see we actually are doing this in our garage we have since sold that house and so um for the rest of the video you're going to see us just working outside um at a friend's shop but we uh yeah we, we decided to just go ahead and build the kitchen area first or at least get the framework done to get a better idea of how these panels work and we decided to actually use epoxy. Typically, Kusa is bonded with epoxy because that's just how people 
build things in the marine environment, and it's certainly a very strong way to do it. And for the kind of kitchen cabinet that's going to have a lot of drawers and a lot of weight to it, we decided that um, we we're going to go ahead and do epoxy for that. So we did some just butt-in joints with epoxy, and then we used some fiberglassing to strengthen those joints more, and you'll see more details on that. But here we are just mixing up some of the epoxy to um, start putting the cabinet together. As we work more with the KUSA panels, I did a bunch of tests using different types of glues. Uh, the, the glue that Total Composites uses for their box builds and recommends for attaching interior pieces works really well with these KUSA panels. So in, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't do the epoxy again. I, I think the, the, uh, the glue that Total Composites uses, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm drawing a blank on the name. Um, it, it works great. It's really strong. And so I think, I think as long as you have enough cross bracing and whatnot, it, it would do really well. The basic cabinet frame is for the most part done. There will be some cross members that go here that the uh, drawer hardware will sit on. But yeah, basically all the joints have been epoxied and pocket screwed. I'm going to also just put one layer of glass tape and epoxy there at each of those joints just to stiffen it up a bit. But it came out real nice, nice and square, weighs nothing. Here I am just applying some of the fiberglass strips and glassing to those inside joints just to make them a little bit stronger. I'm happy we went with the fiberglass for this cabinet because it is going to hold quite a bit of weight. But like I said earlier, I, I think you could get away with using the Total Composites glue but uh, it is nice knowing that this is a little bit overbuilt. So now we're transitioning to this shop that I am borrowing or sharing with some folks. And yeah, unfortunately we had to, to keep the truck outside in the weather, but at least we had a place out of the wind to work. It was rather chilly. Starting out, we were in single digits, and um, not going to lie, it was brutal. If you're wondering, yes, that is snow in here, and that is ice. It's definitely not hot. <laughs> it's a wee bit chilly. <laughs> We'll peek outside real quick here. Oh, don't mind that ice. And that ice. I honestly think today, when we woke up, it was three degrees. Okay. Our first piece. Woohoo! This is kind of the back wall. So we'll have dinette seat here. Dinette seat here, and then this will be a little raised floor. System. Been really happy with it. We had to ditch our big cabinet table saw because it was taking up too much space. And this has the ability to do pretty nice repeatable cuts. I haven't set up the measurement gauges, but it actually has taped measurements so you can do, like I said, real nice repeatable cuts. I just put it together today and it's, uh, it's been great. 
Okay, so we just set up that 2x4 to make a nice 90 degree angle for this piece that's going to be glued to that board. And as you can see, we've got three pocket hole screws there just to help with the gluing process. I'll double check that it's square and then we'll get that cinched up. All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, a lot warmer today, excited. I think it's 20 degrees out, which is bloody hot compared to the negative three it was yesterday. Um, so, let's see, getting you caught up on progress. You can see here, yesterday we got things taped out and measured. We started on the structure that's gonna make up the dinette. We're gonna have a 32 inch seat here raised platform and then a 42 inch seat here beds going back here as well as the kind of garage and then uh, today i'm going to continue framing in this corner this is going to be the shower it's going to be a 24 by 26 inch i think is what we decided on dedicated shower toilets going across the way there so here I am building the shower pan and it's going to be raised up a few inches to allow for drain, plumbing, and whatnot. We're actually using a, like a marine galley pump. It's designed to gather wastewater and pump it out. It actually turns on automatically when the drain senses water and it's a really nice way to have a drain without requiring a lot of depth for plumbing. Next up I am prepping the total composite wall to have one of the CUSA boards glued to it. So the basic process there is to give the wall a light sanding and then wipe it with some denatured alcohol and just simply apply some glue and press it on up. Here's another shot of the shower pan going in, just doing some dry fitting. That front piece will be kind of a linear drain. I gave it about a quarter inch slope and it drains towards that front edge. Here we are starting to work on placement for some of our electrical components. We decided to go with Mastervolt for the majority of our electronics and their partner company C-Zone, which provides digital switching and a touchscreen monitor and remote monitoring that uh, was important to us. I have a separate video talking about the components we're using and why we chose them over the more common, you know, for example, Victron. But uh, anyways, I'll leave a link to that above and you can check that out. Here we are. We decided that we needed to trim down a cabinet that we had already made um, for our kitchen area because it doesn't fit in the door. So we trimmed it down about a half inch and we are um, going to go see if it actually can slide in the door now. All right, well, we are ready to start attaching this cabinet here to the wall. So one of the things with Total Composites boxes is you can't actually screw anything into the wall. This is literally just spray foam with this fiberglass on the inside and outside. And if you put a screw in there and it applies some pull, it can actually delaminate the fiberglass. So everything needs to be glued to the wall. Uh, Total Composite has good instructions and recommendations for what types of glue to use. But um, to help, one of the ways we're going to secure this cabinet is to put some glue on the back side of these pieces here and glue it against the wall. In addition, I'm going to glue in some angle iron aluminum that uh, will glue to the total composite wall and then I'll do some through bolts to secure, to add a little bit more that way. 
So right now I'm just going to mark out the areas that will need some glue and uh, we'll get this uh, sucker buttoned up. Just gonna give it a quick scuff with some 100 grit sandpaper and then we'll wipe it off with that denatured alcohol. Just going to apply some glue to the back side of the frame, cabinetry, and we're going to push it back on. Hey y'all, so I'm in here with August, and he was just giving me the download about our Rixon heating system. So he's going to give you a little bit of the download of how it works and how cool it is. All right, we are working on getting our Rixson hydronic heater installed today, or at least getting the location dialed. Um, what this does, it has an outside furnace that runs off of gas out of the fuel tank, and then it pumps, it circulates uh, radiator uh, coolant through this stainless steel box and then that hot fluid is pumped throughout the camper to different heat exchangers like this. This is a forced air heat exchanger. The, the hot coolant gets pumped in, fan blows through it, and you get hot air. They have the same thing for hot water. So we're gonna have a hot water heat exchanger and uh, for the sink and another one for the shower. Here are all the components that come with the Rickson heating system. You can click above for a link to another video where I do a unboxing of everything. After playing with a bunch of different heater locations on the outside, we actually ended up mounting it basically right behind the cab, which worked out awesome. Super easy to get to. It's going to be really easy to maintain it. And after extending the wiring harness to allow me to get to the fuel pump, that worked out great. Well, that basically wraps up week one. Doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, it's progress and I'll take it. Given the uh, brutal cold, I think we got a lot done. Next week, we'll be installing our electric steps and some starting on some of the plumbing and electrical. So be sure to subscribe and uh, we look forward to seeing you for the next uh, part two of our build. See you then.